chick. Hecker has done it again. Are you kidding me, Johnny Hecker? Yeah. Play the guitar, friend. Johnny, Johnny's the best punter in the league and, and showed tonight. Best punter in the National Football League. You know, I, I, I think he deserves a game ball. It's just great to know that Aaron Dalton knows my name sometimes. You know, that guy's <laughs> such a star in this league. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Punter love. Oh, we love this. Uh, Mina, we're very excited about this, but let's talk about Johnny Hecker and how does a performance like that help change the outcome of a game? Where to begin, Laura? I mean, the man, the myth, the legend, Johnny Hecker. They say Bigfoot doesn't exist, but I'm pretty sure I saw him <laughs> in Los Angeles last night because Johnny Hecker was clobbering. That thing, four punts down inside the Bears' tents. The first time any punter has done it all season. And here's how it impacts the Bears' offense or an opposing offense. Look what they did afterwards when he punted it. Uh, this is, by the way, yeah, this is what we talk about when we talk about hidden yards. On average, when an offense starts from their own 10 versus uh, their own 25, they lose half a point, which, of course, adds up over the course of a game. This is what winning in all three phases looks like, which is what the Rams did. They have the best punter in the NFL, who's one of the best, best punters in the history of the game. And yesterday on Monday Night Football, he truly put the special in special teams. Yeah, over the last three seasons, Hecker has pinned opponents inside the, their own 10-yard line, 22% of his punts. That's the highest rate of any punter over that span. Incredible how he can affect the game. And let's continue on with that game last night on Monday Night Football. The Bears hoping Nick Foles could create a spark for their offense, but that hasn't been the case. Since taking over as a starter in week four, Foles ranks 29th in total QBR, 30th in yards per attempt, is tied for the most interceptions in the league over that span with five. However, it may not be all Foles' fault. Chicago's offense has recorded a 41% pass block win rate since week four, the second worst rate in the league, not getting a lot of help from the O-line. Last night on the broadcast, Brian Greasy talked about a conversation he had with Foles about the play calling. We were talking to Nick Foles yesterday, and he said, you know, sometimes play calls come in, and I know that I don't have time to execute that play call. And, you know, I'm the one out here getting hit. Sometimes the, the guy calling the plays, Matt Nagy, he doesn't know how much time there is back here. And so that's something that they have to get worked out. That was definitely a miscommunication with Brian and I. Um, you know, we do these pregame um, conversations the day before the game just to give them information. Um, that conversation, uh, Coach Nagy and I have a great, great conversation on the, the sidelines. So there might be times where we, we go through it beforehand and say, hey, what do you think? And there's times where you got to get the ball out quick and whatnot. You know, in that situation with Brian, it was just a miscommunication of words because that's not what um, I was trying to uh, bring across in that conversation. Okay, so a little bit of clarification there from Nick Foles. But, Dan, we just heard that the coach and the quarterback might not be on the same page for the Bears. What does the tape from what you see say about Nagy's play call? Well, Matt Nagy doesn't know what the Bears are really good at offensively, and he also doesn't know of, like, what to avoid when it comes to their offense. Something the Bears do well is play with tempo, and when they do, it usually leads to the best opportunity for scoring drives. Last night, first and ten, this is going to be the play-action pass where Foles drifts out to his right, throws back across his body, Cole Komet for a huge conversion one-on-one -on -one downfield. Oh, great. Now we're going to watch Nick Foles jogging. This is the Bears offense playing with tempo. So they get up there again. First and 10. Let's just get lined up and get the defense kind of off balance a little bit. Foles gets out of the pocket, something they need to do more of. Play action pass. He creates. Great. Conversion. Now let's go to second down. You're going to see, Bert, look at that signal. We're playing no huddle tempo football. They run it on second down, get a yard. Go no huddle again, get the third and two conversion for a first down that's great that's doing exactly what you should do now first and ten for some reason they huddle up this is not who the bears offense needs to be they're going to go about minute nine on the clock you're going to see a run and because they huddled defenses can change their personnel and all of a sudden they get to third and five now look at the clock the clock wore down and they're in the huddle there at third and five what they should have done was got to line of scrimmage and ran a play but they huddle they go to the second quarter the Rams dial up a pressure. Ball has to come out because they can't protect it. And then it's a bang, bang hit, forcing a punt. Like that is a perfect example of Matt Nagy not having a feel for what they're good at. You just went down the field with tempo. Don't huddle. You're not good at it. You know, and at the end of the first quarter, you should have ran to the line of scrimmage with about 20 seconds on the clock, got in a formation, and tried to gather some information of what the Rams were going to do. Because if you lined up in that bunch, 
You might have seen the Rams showing pressure. The end of the first quarter comes, and then you have a plan for it. Hey, let's talk about that blitz that they were going to look at and how we want to defend it. Yeah, you were standing up for that whole thing, so I don't know why you just sat back down. You're about to stand back up again, because on the flip side of this, McVay seems to have all the right answers dialed up for his offense. You said the gap between these two coaches is very large. Why? Whatever you think it is, times it by 100. Because Sean McVay knows exactly what the Rams are good at, and they major in it, and then he knows what they're not good at, and he totally avoids it. Last night, they're good at tempo, pre-snap motion, and then movement outside the pocket. So what you're going to see, no huddle offense. Jared gets the line of scrimmage. Dummy cadence. He's going to see the safety go back to the middle field. Great. You're going to play cover three. So now we'll see the second step. There's the no huddle. This is the second step. Pre-snap motion. Cooper Cup. Pre-snap motion's across. And while they do that, we're going to show you his scissors. Robert Woods sneaks out the backfield to the vacated spot in the zone. And what's the third thing? Play action pass, moving the pocket outside. Jared Goff goes play fake. Look at all that space that they've now created because of those three steps. An easy completion for their, their offense. They major in all three things. Now, what do they not do well? Drop back pass. Early on in this game, third and four. If I get into empty and I see you coming with a six-man pressure, Jared Goff's like, no, 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 no. We are not good at this. I'm not going to do this. So he's just going to walk up to the line of scrimmage, make a check to a little quick screen to the perimeter to Gerald Everett. And here's the thing. Sean McVay knows we are not good at that. I'm not going to expose my football team to anything bad. If we don't get the first down, I don't care. I'm just going to kick it out to Everett. And if I have to punt, I'll punt. But he knows that that's not what they're good at, and so he's not going to do it. That's why the gap is totally different. The Rams major. They major in the things that they excel at. And Sean McVay's like, you know what? The things that we're not good at, we're never going to do. And it showed last night. Yeah, it's so interesting. It should be as simple as this. Just create your scheme around the strengths of your players, right? right. I don't know why that's so hard. All right.